What's up, guys? My name is Matthew Egan. Online, I go by Trainer Toll. Thumbnails. Thumbnails are a big deal. When you're figuring out what video you're going to click on, the thumbnail is all in the psyche. You're picking, figuring it out. Rankings matter a lot, but the thumbnail is huge. So today, we're going to talk about thumbnails. If this is your first time joining us, do hit that like and subscribe button, ring that bell so you never miss any of my SEO tips. Today's question comes from one of my favorite streamers, Nicholas Van Jay. Fantastic guy. Let's watch his question. Hi, Trainer Tall. Nicholas Van Jay here. I wanted to find out about YouTube thumbnails and specifically how they relate to YouTube's uh, traffic algorithms. If they do affect algorithms in any way, I would be very interested in looking into how to make them better for the purpose of my content specifically. Uh, if they do, what exactly affects the algorithms? Is it the thumbnail itself? Is it the color? Is it the composition? How do thumbnails affect YouTube's algorithms? Let me know. Thanks. This is a, this is a heavy question. This is like, this is, we're gonna get down into it. So I wanna do like the TLDR version of this first. Um, can YouTube see the artistic quality of your thumbnail? No. Will a user pick which video out of a lineup based on your thumbnail? Yes. So does the thumbnail influence the algorithm? Indirectly, but so strongly indirectly that I would almost call it directly. Let's look at some specifics. We'll start out looking at Google first and then we'll dive into YouTube results in a little bit. Uh, this is my video for the Stagger Effect Part 1. You can see the number two and the number three rankings here. Uh, the third video went up April 11th. The second video went up April 14th. My video went up April 10th. Again, the number one piece of advice I always try to repeat, be first to answer that question. That helps a ton. But then looking at these three thumbnails, if you're a gamer trying to figure out you know, which video to click on, uh, you know, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Stagger Effect Part 1, Complete Quest Guide, and there's a face in it, there's a person in it, it's relatable. This one is a number two, it's a cropped buster sword. Um, Final Fantasy VII Remake, the Sacrifice Effect Part One, this this third one, uh, it's just a, a, a gameplay still. So of these three, you know, we want to have a thumbnail that is super uh, relatable, that, that has some personality. And you can see because of that, uh, mine is number one, and it's number one, not just because there's a good thumbnail, not just because I was first, but because it is the result of these three that somebody clicked on. So, so focus, this is a little technical. Out of these three results, if all of a sudden everybody started clicking on this video and not mine, and they stayed and they watched the whole video, Google would see, oh, people actually want this video more. So by being the attractive click, the attractive thumbnail, even if I was not the first result, by having the better looking thumbnail, that draws the eye, that draws the click. And if you retain those people, if they don't just watch for 10 seconds and then leave, right? If the exit percentage is good. And this is why you want to be careful not to just get a bunch of frivolous views on your videos. If people are not watching them till the end, if people are not watching the majority of the video, I want to say on Trainer Toll, my completion percentage is about 58%. Because I rely on on search terms, I don't pump up the views in any way. You can look at, at the, this SEO channel to see that I very much do not pump up the views. I want them to be a real viewer. I want them to be watching the full video so that the watch time is maximized, right? You don't want a high exit percentage. If you watch it for 10 seconds and then they leave, Google goes, okay, how did they get to this video? Those people didn't want this, right? And so that's where I get into where we talk about like, it's an indirect part of the algorithm, but it's so important that it's practically direct, right? Because if no one's clicking on your thumbnail, then Google goes, okay, we shouldn't feed that as the number one result. Let's see here. So the, the fourth video here, uh, and actually I don't think that's a bad uh, thumbnail uh, for, for number four there, because it says the stagger effect part one walkthrough. Something to consider here is where um, if you look at mine, the the time here where it says four minutes and 44 seconds, that actually covers up part of my title. So I think this fourth icon does a really good job because it's not covered up. Now on YouTube, it's the bottom right where they put the duration, right? So you always have to be careful. Uh, my emphasis is always make sure it doesn't cover up my face uh, because they do see the title here. Um, and you can see too where we talk about how long a title is. You see this dot, dot, dot. So that means the title was a little bit too long. So it got caught up you know, final was in there, but then fantasy seven remake 
got cut off, so that didn't appear. It's in there for the keyword value. It's going to be there when somebody views it on Google or on, on YouTube, but in the Google results, it gets truncated, and that's that's kind of a bummer. So you want to try to do the best you can at around you know 60 characters, any more than that, and you wind up in this situation where it gets cut off. Not a bad thing, not a horrible thing, but it just it it looks less good than it than it could. Um, you know, stagger effect, it's over 300. This video went up only six days ago. So you see, like, it, he just, it was, he was too late. Um, not a bad thumbnail. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Report 03, the stagger effect part one. He went up on the 11th as well. So, you know, just not having a good click through and I beat him. You know, I was the first result. I was the first one to answer the question. So the fact that the eyeballs are on my video and people stuck around to watch the whole thing, I was just teaching Google, hey, I was the first and I actually answered the question. So my exit percentage being low kept people at that video. Um, and yeah, so this is the final one, uh, how to reach 200% stagger. So this is even a different question as is this one. So you can see where like sometimes it, it still talks about stagger damage and whatnot, the stagger effect. But I think that this is uh, part three or part four uh, of that quest. While we're on the topic of thumbnails, I do want to point out, this is a category, this is the Animal Crossing category on Twitch. Uh, when So so uh, Victor Delight here, his thumbnail for his uh, his cam sits on the far bottom right, right? And then you see over there, uh, Larvae Games, his is above that viewer count, right? And then you see in the top left corner where it says live, you don't want to put something up there that would be obscured, right? So the thumbnail of your overlay is what somebody's looking at when they're looking in that category. In the ideal situation, I'm gonna put a video up here in the top from uh, Dabes Jared that talks about uh, you know how to optimize yourself within the category and what categories not to chase if uh, you're below or above a certain threshold. Uh, really, really good video. They're long, but they're worth the watch. Uh, but you know, if someone's looking at the category listing here and you know your viewer count covers your face your face is one of the best parts. You know, people watch streamers, not games, right? And so you want to make sure that you're in a situation where you're showing off your face. This thumbnail matters just as much as your thumbnail on YouTube. As we move over to the YouTube results, I want to give you guys kind of a bonus tip while we're here. As you start typing in YouTube's search bar, you see how it auto-completes the stagger effect part one, the staggering girl, the stagger effect part three. These are the things that somebody is searching for, right? So you know what's not there? Uh, stagger effect part two, it's all the way down. It's like the number 10 search result. Not a lot of people are searching for that because that quest isn't very hard, right? But then people are curious, how do I complete part one? How do I complete part three? In hindsight, I should have done a video it probably would have gotten four or 5,000 views if I had done it right then on how to complete part three based on this search result. It's showing you the ones that are searched the most in order, right? And so the stagger effect part one is the one that most people had the questions for uh, within this. And you can also see, uh, one of the things we talk about is which keyword to put in your title tag. Should you put part one or PT one? And you can see here, I probably should have put PT one instead of part one because PT one seems to be uh, a higher search volume. It's number one versus number three, which has the full P-A-R-T spelled out. The syntax does matter. Now, if you're still number one and it's close enough, you're probably gonna be fine, but you can look at this to see kind of of the two, uh, which do you wanna use? So I'll go ahead and put in, I'll go ahead and put in PT one. So it's a little bit different. I still come up number one, which is which is good. So it's, it's sitting at about 27,000 views. Uh, and then the number two result, 23,000 views. Number three, 3.9 thousand views. Uh, number four, 1.7 thousand views. Number five, only 651 views. So you can see the difference there. You know, number one and number two both did really well. Uh, the number two result put in PT1. Uh, and then he, at the very beginning of his title tag, he put in no how to complete or anything like that. So he went straight to the stagger effect part one tutorial, which this is a really, really well-written uh, title tag, potentially even better than mine because you see how much shorter and more succinct it is. How to complete, those don't add any keywords, right? Yes, it's a how to, yes, it's a it's a guide, it's a tutorial, but those aren't keywords, right? So somebody's searching for the stagger effect part one or the stagger effect PT one, whatever. Um, but then again, looking at these five thumbnails, uh, you know, this number four result, how to complete, you know, not a, not a bad thumbnail, but the number three and number five, they're just in-game uh, in game footage. Mine, on the other hand, um, I'm very much influenced. Sam Woodhall, he makes fantastic thumbnails. Uh, Austin John Plays also makes fantastic thumbnails. 
uh, I Justine, fantastic. So I, I'm I'm inspired by other creators who I've seen do really really cool things, and and that helps. You know, always you know uh, emulate and and you know find things that work and and, and figure out your template within within that space. Um, I have a, a single Photoshop template that I use. I just change out the image. I change out my picture, and then you know I put the little white uh, outline just to make me pop off the background a little bit. But almost all the fonts are the same. That yellow, it's meant to really catch the eye so that when someone's looking at all of these, you know, the eye is drawn to that yellow. You know, yes, it's a bright, so, you know, some would say obnoxious color. Yellow is part of my brand too. But, you know, that way, uh, you know, my eye drew the attention. And you can see again here, uh, you know, four minutes and 44 seconds. It says there in the corner, one minute, 13 seconds. Um, you know, so... Uh, I, I had almost a three minute average viewing on that video. And I do answer the question pretty early on and then I show uh, how it's done. Um, I also have a lot of likes on that video and I have a ton of comments. And the comments on that video are fantastic. So all of these are part of this click through algorithm that Google and YouTube were using to figure out of these two videos, which one should they suggest, right? And so, uh, you know, I got a bit more traffic than the guy above. He had a eighty-one percent, so he had more dislikes than I did. Um, you know, he only and 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 VidIQ, uh, which is an absolute great tool. So I had nine hundred likes, twenty-eight dislikes. Uh, he had one hundred and sixty likes, thirty-eight dislikes. So you know, he had quite a few uh, views on it, but for some reason, people didn't like his answer. Uh, you know, so he only got one hundred and sixty likes. That, that's interesting. I wonder why. You know, with twenty-three thousand views, I would have expected um, more more likes on there, but. You know, it, it is what it is. Uh, if you if you drop down here, number three result only got 14 likes, 23 dislikes. So he actually had a negative ratio where more dislikes to likes. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with his video, but, um, you know, I, I, I try to do a higher production value. So you can see the difference in the production value where 900 likes, 28 dislikes. Uh, and, and sometimes you get people that just go around disliking videos because your videos are doing well, they dislike you. You know, and it might have been that one of these guys in the top five disliked it. But the thumbnail is a big part of that, right? And and you can see that right here in the results where, you know, the, the best produced thumbnail and the video that was put up first uh, is the one that's ranking the best. It's the one that got the most likes and it's the one that got the most views. You can't talk about great thumbnails without looking at Alpha Gaming. Sam Woodhall, who does the editing and the graphics for uh, Harris Heller, these are fantastic. That angry Twitch uh, logo, they don't care. Very bold. You know, th th we want to be able to catch the headline. Uh, the next video, you know, it, it's it's the insides of the computer. There's no there's no text. There's no big title. It's just these little pop-outs for the RTX 2080 Super, the RTX 2080 Ti. You know, it... it it shows you what you want to see. This is meant to really excite gearheads, right? So two very different videos, two very different topics, both on the same channel, but they approached the thumbnail very differently in order to attract who they were trying to reach. Austin John Plays, who I mentioned a bit earlier, you can see the, the formula that he's following here. He's got a, a text treatment that he stuck with. He's also using yellow like I do with a, a bit of a kind of a gold uh 3D thing going on to it, but all of the videos follow the same formula. They have a screenshot, they have text. My recommendation here would be to show his smiling face, uh, but you know, he has passed 1 million subscribers on his channel, so obviously he's doing pretty well. I, Justine, I'm a huge fan of her YouTube channel, have been for many, many years. You can see it's very her focused, but then it's also focused on whatever it is that she's talking about. So she's making a very bold face, you know, and she's holding up what she's talking about, right? So the Mavic uh, Air 2, I swear to God, she had that before it was even announced. So cool. She's holding up the product right there in her thumbnail so that you know, oh, that's hot. That's a trending topic. So it's very present in her thumbnail so that you go, oh, I want to know about that. I saw it and immediately I was like, wait, she already has one? Like, let me see. Let me see the review. It was, it was good. She's talking about the iPhone SE. She's got photos of it next to her and she's kind of making a... I'm talking about this and she's pointing at it, right? Any opportunity like that to show who you are, you're the host, you're the one that matters here. Again, people don't watch games, they watch streamers, right? People are going on YouTube to find this information and you want them to build a relationship with you. So show yourself, you know, be a part of that thumbnail. Linus Tech Tips, huge YouTuber, just past 10 million subscribers. 
He uses the same technique that I do, just a simple cutout. He throws that white stroke, just a couple of pixels of white stroke around it to make it super fast and easy to cut out for the thumbnail. Throws a little background behind it. It's holding up the product that he's talking about, right? So I just got in the new Funko Sylveon. So I would hold it up something like this and maybe hold it closer to the camera and not have my green screen on so that it disappears. It's an invisible Pokemon, but that would be, you know, my thumbnail and it would be like unboxing Sylveon and then, you know, but, but the product would be there and you would be there smiling. It's all about you. You are the performer and you are talking about this product. So as long as you capture yourself and the thing in there, it doesn't even have to have text. I don't know if you're sensing a theme here, but everybody says it's really hard to cut out their photo. Look at what Talies and Inevitel are doing. 275,000 subscribers, and it's just a simple white outline around their picture to help separate it from the game background and the images that are behind the photo. Super, super simple. Against a white background, one click selects it all to remove, and then boom, you're removed, but there's still plenty of room for game footage, for titles. Uh, you know, they do the weekly reset. That's the name of their ongoing program. So that's what they include. And then they show kind of what parts of the game that they're talking about. It's a little bit of them. It's a little bit of the game. And it's got the game branding and their branding all in one thumbnail. We've been talking about the white outline a ton. It was actually a video from vidIQ that I watched that recommended doing that in the first place. vidIQ is the plugin for Chrome that I use to see all the background information about number of likes, number of comments, ratios, subscribers, what my keywords should be, all that kind of stuff. vidIQ is great. vidIQ.com. Uh, but you, you can see here, they uh, use that white outline as well. They're, they're the ones that recommended it to me. And then I started seeing it on everybody else's channel. I was like, okay, I get it. That This this really saves a ton of time and helps you make a, a good thumbnail fast. Um, but you can see within their, uh, their template, they made kind of a, you know, the text up top, something to do with it over there on the left. And then the, the person doing the hosting uh, there on the right. But uh, really cool, really clean thumbnails, very professional. This is my secret matrix scene in OBS that I use for my thumbnails. So it's an all white background, but because I'm gonna put a white line around my image, when I select all the white to remove it, if it leaves a little bit of white edge, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna put a white line outlining me anyway via the stroke tool on Photoshop. So all I do is pose and then boom, there's my thumbnail. I know this is a long one, but hopefully you feel a bit more comfortable with your thumbnails. Do you feel like a bit of a thumbnail expert now? Well, I mean, yeah, basically what you're saying is the thumbnail itself doesn't affect the algorithm, but it affects the behaviors in the viewers that does. I, I, semantically, I think you could make the argument that the thumbnail, it is indirectly because it's based on the user's behavior, but it's based on the psychology. Pretty so thumbnails good. Pretty, pretty thumbnails good. If you like this video, do hit that like and subscribe button, ring that bell so you never miss a video. We do stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Twitch, twitch.com. TV slash Trainer Toll, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll see you there.